Hello everybody! Welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about some counting techniques for probabilities and specifically we're going to talk about factorials, combinations, permutations, and tree houses. Okay, so I have four friends and conveniently their names are one, two, three, and four. And even more conveniently, today they wore shirts with their names on them. So I want to know how many different ways I can line up my friends in some sort of order. I can line them up in numerical order, person one, two, three, and then four. But I can also line them up as person three, two, one, and then four. And clearly there are many other ways and I want to count them. And I really don't want to be shuffling my friends all day. Let's look at a tree diagram. I am going to start at some root and then I'm going to branch out and at the end of each branch I'm going to put the number of the person that's going to go in the first position. So person one, two, three, or four. Now once person one goes in the first position then I can think about the second position and there's only three possibilities and that's person two, three, or four. Equivalently if I put person two in the first position I have three possibilities for the second position. That's person one, three, and four, and hopefully you get the idea. So only filling two positions, I already have one, two, one, three, one, four, two, one, two, three, two, four, three, one, three, two, three, four, four, one, four, two, four, three, and that's 12. And you can easily count that up by multiplying these four branches by the three branches we have on the end of each branch. So we're gonna continue, we're gonna look at the third person. If I already put person three in the first position and person two in the second position, now I'm left with the possibility of putting persons one or four in the third position, and then the last person just goes in the last position. Now, we have paths through this tree, and they all come to one of these points at the end, and there are 24 points. And I know that because I have four times three times two times one, and that's 24. Do you need to multiply the one? No but I thought it was a nice sort of sense of completeness. And each pathway through this tree is a way to line up my friends. For example, if I want to line up person three and then person two, and then I want person one, and then I want person four, that corresponds to this path. And so again, you have three times four times two times one path, which is a total of 24 ways to line up your friends. Okay, so if I had eight friends, I don't want to draw this tree anymore, but I do know that the principle would be the same. And the number of ways that I can line them up would be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And even more generally, if I had n friends, the number of ways to line them up would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 down to 3 times 2 times 1. And this product is known as a factorial, and it is read as n factorial, and it is denoted by n with an exclamation point after it, which really bugs me because it makes it difficult to express my enthusiasm for mathematics without confusion. Okay, so we know there are 24 different ways to line up four friends. Now, suppose I am putting together a treehouse club and I'm not in it, I'm just a distant observer, but suppose I have five people to put in this treehouse club and I wanna give them the positions of president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and chief engineer, because you gotta have a chief engineer in a treehouse. How many committees can I form? I'm gonna write the positions of president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and chief engineer, because you gotta have a chief engineer in a treehouse. I'm gonna make these sort of positions or slots, and now it's a matter of how many ways I can scatter my friends in there. Because there's five people, I can do this in five factorial ways. So that's five times four times three times two times one, which is 120. So there are 120 different ways that I can assign these titles to my friends. Why didn't they let me into the treehouse club with them? Okay, let's make it slightly more tricky. Got the treehouse club, I'm still not invited for some reason, but there's five people there and there's only three positions to be filled. President, vice president, and chief engineer. Why? Because you gotta have a chief engineer. So how many committees can I form now? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put out five positions. Even though I only have three to fill, I'm gonna label the first three. I'm labeling them president, vice president, and you know what? And I'm gonna to try to scatter my friends in here. And if they land like this, that means that I will assign person two to be president, person four to be vice president, and person one to be chief engineer. 
And five and three, well, they can just run in circles over here. I don't really care about them. Um, they didn't let me into their treehouse club, so I don't even feel bad. But in this positioning, person two is president, person four is vice president, and person one is chief engineer. Now, I can line these people up differently and still get the exact same result. And that would happen if persons five and three start scrambling their positions. Because no matter how they stand, both of these would give me person two, four, and one in those three positions respectively. So I've got 120 ways to line these people up, but I've got some that are redundant. And if I had more than two out here, maybe I had eight extra people, then they can scramble in eight factorial ways, which would give me redundancy in the first positions. So I'm gonna take five factorial, the total number of ways to line these five people up, and I'm gonna divide out two factorial, which is only two, and that will be dividing out the different ways that these people can stand. I don't care about them. They didn't let me in the club. And uh, so that's our answer. We have five factorial over two factorial, which is 120 over two, which is 60 different ways to form a committee of three people for the Treehouse Club. Now, the ordering of these first three people is important because if I have person two here, that means they're president. And if I have person two here, that means they're chief engineer and you gotta have a chief engineer. So for the first three people, the order is important. Choosing K things out of N things. So this is like three out of five, but generalized to K out of N when order is important is called a permutation. The number of ways to choose K things out of N things when order is important is a permutation and it's often denoted with a capital P with a little N in front of it and a little K after it. And it is equal to N factorial over N minus K factorial, which is what we just discovered on our own. N was five and we wanted to choose three positions. So that was K and five minus three was two. And those were the people that we wanted to divide out the redundant positions for. So this is known as a permutation. Okay, so I have five friends in a treehouse club. And I, seriously, I'm not gonna stand around here much longer because I am not in the treehouse club, but they have three board positions to fill. And they're not really specific. It's just these three people will be members of the board. So how many ways can we do that? So I can make a lineup of all five people and the first three people in my line are gonna be the board member. But now if I scramble the first three people, I am redundantly counting things because I'm still gonna have the same three people as board members. So here we're trying to count something and order is unimportant. So the ordering two, four, and one for my board members is no different than my ordering four, one, and two. And I'm gonna double count again. So we say here that order is not important and the different orderings of the first three people are redundant and must be divided out. Choosing K things out of N things when order is not important is called a combination. The number of ways to choose K things out of N things when order is not important is N factorial, the number of ways to line everyone up, divided by K factorial, the number of ways to scramble the people that actually fell into the board member positions, also divided by N minus K factorial, the number of ways to divide out the redundancy you get by the people who are not on the board getting into different orders. This is known as a combination and it is written like this with these like extra long parentheses and this symbol is read N choose K. It is the number of ways to choose K things out of N things when order is not important. As another example, suppose I have a standard deck of 52 playing cards nice and randomly shuffled and I want to know how many five card hands I can, I can get, you know, from playing poker or something. So I can get a two of clubs and an ace of spades and a jack of hearts and, you know, et cetera. There's many ways for me to get five cards, but order is not important. So in terms of poker, now you may want things to be lined up nicely, but in terms of a, a hand for poker, having an ace over by your thumb is not important. You know, having an ace of spades and a jack of hearts and a three of clubs and a seven of diamonds and a two of hearts, I can't repeat that, is the same as having, I'm gonna cut those back in. 
So no one cares what is near your thumb and what is near your pinky. Order is not important. So the answer is a combination. It is 52 choose five. And that is 52 factorial over five factorial times still in the denominator 47 factorial number of different hands of five cards that you can have. And if you actually multiply that out, it's 2,598,960 different five card hands you can have for playing your game. So let's take the deck of 52 cards and shuffle it. And I wanna randomly select only two cards and I wanna know the probability that we'll get two aces. This is a question we asked at the end of the last lesson and we're ready to answer it now because we're so much more sophisticated. Okay, so for the probability of getting two aces, if they're really randomly shuffled, then getting two aces is equally likely as getting two threes. It's equally likely as getting a specific four of diamonds and three of clubs. Any two card grouping is equally likely. Order is not important. So I have to count the total number of ways I can select two cards. You know, if you were to line up like we did with the dice, we made a six by six table, 36 ways that are two dice landed, one, 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 two, one, three, etc. We could have like two of clubs, two of diamonds, two of clubs, two of hearts. There's a lot of things to line up. That's a, that's a, that's a math term. It means etc. Okay, let's go back to the example. Everything's equally likely. So first I have to ask myself how many possible groups of two cards can I draw? And I don't care about order because again, I just wanna have two aces. I don't wanna have an ace in the left hand and an ace in the right hand. So the total number of ways to draw two cards is 52 choose two. It's a combination. And there's more than two ways to draw the aces because I might get an ace of clubs and an ace of diamonds or an ace of clubs and an ace of spades or an ace of diamonds and an ace of spades or maybe hearts and something else. There are four aces and I need to choose two. So there's four choose two ways to get the aces. And if you work this out, it comes out to approximately 0 0.004525. Not bad. In my third example, I want to take my well shuffled deck and I want it to randomly select five cards and I want to know the probability of getting this particular hand. I want the four of clubs and the three of hearts and the jack of spades and the ace of diamonds and the eight of spades. There's only one way to get that hand. I mean, I don't care about order, so I'm not going to be concerned with all the ways to shuffle that hand of five cards. So this is just a matter of one out of the total number of ways you can grab five cards when order is not important. That is a combination. The number of ways you can do that is 52 choose two. So the probability I get this one particular hand, order is not important because I don't care if the four of clubs is the first one here. It's one way to do it out of 52 choose five, which is approximately 0 .000004. Now, if you're playing poker, everyone wants the elusive five card hand that is the Royal Flush. The Royal Flush is the 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace all in the same suit. That 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace could all be hearts, or they could all be spades, or they could all be diamonds, or they could all be clubs. So there's actually four different ways to do that. So the answer there would be four divided by this 52 choose five, four times this probability. Okay, in my next example, I want to take my well shuffled deck, I want to randomly select five cards, and I want to know the probability that we get exactly three aces. This sounds like something we already did, but it's a little different because in that case, we only grabbed two cards and we wanted to know the probability that they were aces. But now I'm grabbing five, so we're gonna to have to grab three aces and then other things. Now the total number of ways to select five cards out of a deck of 52 cards is 52 choose five, so that's going to be the denominator. And we now know that there are four choose three ways to get three aces. Here's one way you can get the ace of clubs, ace of spades, and ace of hearts. Here's another, here's another, and here's a fourth. Four choose three. How many ways can we choose those three aces out of four? It's four choose three, which is four factorial over three factorial times one factorial, which is four. And they're all listed right there. Now to fill out the five card hand, we're gonna have to start with one of these. Think of these as four branches of a tree. And then for each branch, we're gonna have to fill out the five card hand with two more cards. So for this first branch, I can then get a two of diamonds and a seven of spades, or I can get, you know, and there's a lot of possibilities there. There's actually, out of the remaining 48 non-ace cards, 
I need to choose two, and that's what I'm gonna put at the end of my tree. So there are 48 choose two things I can do after each one of these possibilities. For a total of 48, choose two times four ways to select five cards and get three aces, and then two you don't really care about, actually specifically two that are non-aces. And that means that the numerator for our equally likely probability, because five card hands, all of those are equally likely, but the ways we can get three aces is four choose three, and then we can branch off those trees by getting uh, 48 to choose two. And so I'm gonna multiply those and put them over 52 choose five. And if you work this out, you get approximately 0 0.00173. In our next video, we're gonna talk about Venn diagrams. If you haven't heard of them, that's fine. We're gonna do it from scratch. If you had and you haven't seen them used in probability, I think you're gonna love this because they're finally gonna, it's finally gonna be a reason uh, to use them because they're gonna really help us to come up with lots of rules of probability. So I will see you in the next one.